Kitenga o te matua o te tamaiti o te wairua tapu. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Welcome to our chapel here at the Maris Seminary. With me this, today is Father Mick O'Connor and our seminarians from the seminary community. We welcome all of you who are viewing this Mass today. We are aware that you cannot be in your parishes, where you normally are. We pray that you receive graces from these mass, this Mass today and are blessed with the presence of the Lord in your lives. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you were lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You shouldered the cross to bear our suffering and sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You opened for your people the way from death to life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may mature us and nurture us in what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, now Israel, take notice of the laws and customs that I teach to you today, and observe them, that you may have life and may enter and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your forebears, is giving you. You must add nothing to what I command you, 
and take nothing from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God, just as I lay them down for you. Keep them, observe them, and they will demonstrate to the peoples your wisdom and understanding. When they come to know of all these laws, they will exclaim, No other people is as wise and prudent as this great nation. And indeed, what great nation is there that has its God so near as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call to him? And what great nation is there that has laws and customs to match this whole law that I put before you today? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. Lord, who shall dwell on your holy mountain? He who walks without fault, he who acts with justice and speaks the truth from his heart. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. He who does no wrong to his brother or sister, who casts no slur on his neighbour, who holds the godless in disdain, but honours those who fear the Lord. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. He who keeps his pledge, come what may, who takes no interest on a loan, and accepts no bribes against the innocent, such a man will stand firm for ever. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. It is all that is good, everything that is perfect, which is given us from above. It comes down from the Father of all light. With him there is no such thing as alteration, no shadow of a change. By his own choice he made us his children by the message of truth, so that we should be a sort of first fruits of all that he had created. Accept and submit to the word which has been planted in you and can save your souls. But you must do what the word tells you and not just listen to it and deceive yourselves. Pure, unspoilt religion in the eyes of God our Father is this. Coming to the help of orphans and widows when they need it and keeping oneself uncontaminated by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 The Father gave us birth by his message of truth, that we might be as the first fruits of his creation. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered round Jesus and they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with unclean hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees, and the Jews in general, follow the tradition of the elders, and never eat without washing their arms as far as the elbow. And on returning from the marketplace, they never eat without first sprinkling themselves. There are also many other observances which have been handed down to them concerning the washing of cups and pots 
and bronze dishes. So these Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not respect the tradition of the elders, but eat their food with unclean hands? He answered, It was of you hypocrites that Isaiah so rightly prophesied in this passage of Scripture. This people honours me only with lip service, while their hearts are far from me. The worship they offer me is worthless. The doctrines they teach are only human regulations. You put aside the commandment of God to cling to human traditions. He called the people to him again and said, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that goes into a man from outside can make him unclean. It is the things that come out of a man that make him unclean. For it is from within, from people's hearts, that evil intentions emerge. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, malice, deceit, indecency, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and make a person unclean. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We hear the Word of God proclaimed each week at Mass. And perhaps when we come to the Mass each week, there are things on our minds things that have happened during the week, things may be happening with us or with our families, and we bring them to Mass, we place them before the Lord. We also listen intently to the Word of the Lord, believing that the Lord will speak to us and guide us. As we come to Mass this week, it is in a very different context. You cannot go to church to your parish community. You cannot meet your friends. You cannot talk with them about the week that has been. It's a very different Mass for us this week. And so we listen to the Scriptures this week in the context of what we are experiencing. Lockdown, quiet, silence, a limitation of what we can do. But we listen to it in the context of knowing that we are doing that as something good for us, something that will ultimately help us. When the Lord was listening to the Pharisees and listening to them challenging him about his disciples not washing, not keeping the law, the words of Moses would have echoed in his mind. Moses was talking to the people of Israel and saying, Keep the Torah, the law. It is like a light for us. It shows us the way and it will lead us to be a great nation. Jesus would have known that. And so when he heard the Pharisees speak to him and accuse him of not keeping the law, of not keeping the rules regarding cleanliness and washing and his disciples as well, he would have thought to himself, is this what Moses intended for us? Just the keeping of observances. Or would he have thought Moses intended something so much deeper for us, so much more significant in our relationship with God? And so Jesus, from there, in a sense, turns on the Pharisees, 
who were not bad men, who were seeking to help every, the everyday person to live their Jewish faith. But he challenged them and said, well, what about what is inside a person? And what about all those things that can come out of a person and can really show what is deep in their heart? Keeping those observances, keeping those actions of washing and cleaning and all of that, that does not necessarily change what is in a person's heart. It's interesting that this idea of cleanliness is also equated to healthiness. And we know that very well today. To keep clean, to use the sanitizers and keep our distance is to be healthy. I wonder if you've ever thought about what it is to be spiritually healthy. Are there things that we can do so that our spiritual health may grow? Or is it just keeping things the way they always are? First of all, one of the steps to our spiritual life growing and flourishing is the fact that we need to try and link together what we believe and what we do. This is a big task for us because we can sincerely believe in what the church asks of us, of what the scriptures say to us, of what it is to be a good Christian, and yet sometimes our actions do not measure up. To try and work step by step to bring those things together is to grow into a healthy spiritual person where what I do and what I say is not too far apart. Now, it's always going to be a struggle and there is always going to be that separation at times due to our weaknesses and our sinfulness. But to desire to be as the Lord asked us to be, a person who observes the law but also tries to work at the transformation of our hearts. Of course, the starting point with that is calling upon the grace of God because we alone cannot do it. What we do is cooperate with the grace of God working in our life. Another element of spiritual healthiness, if you like, is to know what our faith is, what is in the scripture, what does the church teach about our faith? What do I put aside regarding time to pray? Do I receive the sacraments regularly? All of these things we know are things which nurture us, which bring the grace of God into our lives. We know, for example, all of the effort and energy put into preparation by our Olympians. Those people who went to Tokyo did not achieve that greatness that they achieved there through not preparing. Our spiritual health, another way we could say it is our spiritual fitness, comes from doing those things which nurture us and strengthen us in our faith. When we do that, through the grace of God and through a bit of perseverance, probably through quite a lot of struggle, we start to grow in our spiritual life through the power of God coming into our life, through grace slowly transforming our lives, through us starting to understand the great mercy and love that God has for us. And in that, we become a person in the image of Christ. And lastly, it shouldn't stop there. Our faith should go out. We can perhaps only go out to our bubble at the moment, but our faith should be generative, should be life-giving, should be love-giving. It should find expression in our care for our neighbour. Perhaps some of these things as we focus on the physical health of our nation and pray for all of those people working so hard to bring this uh, pandemic under control, we can think about our own spiritual lives. What can we do in this time of lockdown to nurture and support our spiritual growth? We now profess our faith together. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As people of faith, we place our prayers of intercession before the Lord today. Lord of the Universal Church, protect Pope Francis and the bishops of Aotearoa New Zealand, so they may continue to inspire and serve their communities. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of wisdom and counsel, inspire policy makers and politicians to be courageous and inventive. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, protect frontline workers. May we appreciate them and treat them justly. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, care for those in the medical professions. May they administer their care with love and respect. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of all nations, we present to you those nations whose suffering is great, especially Afghanistan and Fiji. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, for those who are suffering alone, make them aware of the support of their loved ones and show them your warmth. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, care for those who are marginalised, and those who advocate for them, especially the various city missions and the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we call on the presence of your mother, to whom Aotearoa New Zealand was recently rededicated. Comfort all of us with your presence and your love. Help us to live her way, Tiara a Maria. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray you hear these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. May the sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessings of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Patrick, our Bishop, his assistant, Michael, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. 
and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace out in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's pray for peace for a short time. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. presence of our God. 
We are here in the presence of our God. We are here together around the table of the Lord. We are here in the presence of our God. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbour. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray that the grace and blessing of this Mass be with you and your families for the coming week. And we pray that we as the body of Christ can pray for each other and show solidarity with each other through our prayers and kindness to each other. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Kia whakapangi a koutou e ti atua kaharawa te mātua, me te tamaiti, me te wairua tapu. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, proclaiming the gospel with your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Regina Tehi, letare, alleluia. We are Meruisti Portare, Alleluia. Resurrexit, Secut Dixit, Alleluia.